Hello, I am Damien Lemoyle from Western Digital, and this presentation is about ZoneFS or mapping POSIX file system interface to zone block device accesses. I will first start this presentation by giving some uh, background information on zone storage and Linux zone block devices abstraction, as well as uh, briefly introduce Linux kernel and application support for this type of device. I will then uh, present in more detail ZoneFS, its goal, and an overview of its internal operation. An example use case with level DB will be presented and future work uh, will be discussed and this presentation then concluded. First of all, some background information on zone storage and Linux support for these devices. So zone storage, uh, this name refers to a class of, devi uh, of device that divides the storage LBA space into zones uh, with each zone having a sequential write constraint. Uh, why does this type of device came to be is that it essentially uh, allows optimizing the device implementation to give a uh, different characteristic than regular devices. So for example, capacity can be increased. That's the main goal of uh, shingle matching recording with hard disk. Or uh, performance can also be optimized with more predictable latencies or higher throughput. Uh, which is uh, one property that the NVMe zone namespace um, standard is aiming at. So this type of device is standardized for SMO hard drives uh, with the zone block command ZBC for SCSI devices, uh, with the zone ATA command or ZAC for ATA hard drives, and the uh, recently released NVMe zone namespace or ZNS standard uh, defines a zone storage interface for SSDs. All of these standards are very similar. They all define uh, very similar uh, zone management commands, five of them. Uh, one command for obtaining zone information from your drive and four commands for managing the zone state. These commands being reset, open, close, and finish. Uh, two zoning models are defined for devices are defined by ZBC and ZAC in very similar manner. The first model is host managed. Uh, for these devices, uh, the sequential writes in zones is mandatory. Uh, this model is compatible with NVMe ZNS devices. Uh, whereas ZNS does not define any zone model, the exact uh, the, the standard was. Um, created to follow the host managed model. The second model is host aware model, where sequential write within zone is recommended, but not mandatory. Uh, zones may still accept uh, random writes. And this uh, presentation will mainly focus on host managed uh, zone drives, since these uh, have a mandatory uh, sequential write constraint a legacy application cannot be used and special software must be put in place on the host for uh, their use. Zone block devices is a different term that refers to how Linux uh, abstract zone storage, uh, generically abstract zone storage of different types. And this abstraction is defined uh, by reusing uh, many of the concepts that were introduced by the uh, standards, so ZBC, ZAC, and ZNS. For example, one example is the zone type. The zone block device Linux abstraction defined three different zone types, exactly like standards do. The first type is conventional zones. These zones accept random writes. They are optional for SMO hard drives. The second zone type is sequential write required, as mentioned, uh, these are for host managed drives, which makes uh, sequential writing in zones mandatory. Both SMR and ZNS uh, define this zone type. And the third zone type exists only for SMR and host aware models. It is sequential write preferred, and these zones um, can accept uh, random writes. On top of uh, the, the standards, which are defined very broadly, 
the zone block device uh, uh, Linux abstraction introduces some restrictions. And it is that uh, devices that can be supported must have uh, the same zone size for all zones. And that zone size must be a power, a num a power of two number of LBAs. And zones may also have um, a limited usable capacity lower than the zone size, uh, a concept that was introduced by ZNS, uh, but also generalized to uh, all other type of drives within uh, the zone block device abstraction. The picture on the right here uh, is the, the, the basic model that results from this abstraction in Linux. Uh, the device LBA uh, range is divided into zones, every zone uh, being one after the other without any LBA gap between zones. Each zone at the same zone size and within each zone, uh, the usable capacity for the zone may be limited, indicated by the zone capacity feature of the uh, zone information. Each zone has a zone uh, right pointer position indicated by the device itself, which uh, is twofold. First, it shows the amount of data that was written to the zone and also indicates where any write command must be issued. Any write command to write sequentially must be issued at the zone write pointer position. Once the uh, write command completes, the write pointer position is advanced. Uh, some commands like zone reset affect the zone write pointer position. And for example, uh, the reset command allows to rewind the uh, zone write pointer position to the beginning of the zone so that the zone can be written again. So Linux kernel support for zone block devices was introduced about three years ago with kernel version 4.10. This was uh, an implementation initially that focused on uh, uh, SMR hard disks. This implementation provide both kernel internal as well as a user uh, API in the form of several uh, IOCTL operation for zone information, uh, obtaining zone information and managing zones. The kernel also provide uh, right ordering warranties so that uh, a user writing sequentially to zones uh, can be uh, guaranteed that the writes will be correctly processed uh, throughout the IO stack and succeed. Uh, these right ordering warranties were first implemented within the SCSI disk driver but since then uh, changes to the kernel generalized this uh, implementation using uh, the, um, the block IO scheduler uh, implementation. Um, all this support for uh, application requires that users uh, write, uh, use direct IO writes, so opening files with O direct for writing. Uh, this is due to the fact that there are no guarantees for uh, ordered write back of 30 pages in the case of preferred writes. So in order to guarantee that zones are written sequentially, users have to use direct IO writes. This initial support in kernel 510 also introduced native file system support within the F2FF, F2FS file system. Following this initial support, more features were added. Uh, for instance, device mapper support was added uh, to kernel 413. Uh, in particular, this uh, improvement introduced the new DM zone uh, device mapper target, which allows abstracting a host managed disk as a regular drive, uh, on top of which regular file systems such as ext4 can be used. Uh, since then, uh, following uh, kernel releases also introduced various improvements to the internal kernel API as well as the user API. Development for zone block devices support is still ongoing. Uh, the currently uh, ongoing development uh, version of the kernel 5.9 is, for instance, introducing NVMe ZNS support within the NVMe driver. And the kernel is also gaining support uh, for zone block device within the DMCrypt uh, device, device mapper. We are also working on native file system support in BetterFS. 
uh, and expect this development to be um, released upstream very soon. So the result of all this work uh, for zone block device support is, uh, I think the picture zone here, where we end up with two different class of support that uh, application can rely on to use zone block devices. Uh, on the left side, the most simple and straightforward one is for the application to rely on support that gives a POSIX behavior, completely hiding the sequential write constraint of zone of the device. Uh, this requires that either a file system such as F2FS and soon better FS can be used, completely hiding the sequential write constraint for zones within the file system. Legacy application can still issue uh, random writes to files. The file system will handle that. The other solution for this type of uh, application support is to rely on the DM zone device mapper, which abstract a host managed drive as a regular uh, block device, allowing the use of a legacy file system such as XFS or EXT4. And again, a legacy application can use without any modification this file system. The DM zone uh, device mapper can also be used for applications that rely on directly accessing a raw block device uh, file <coughs> for raw block accesses. Uh, so all of these, these three uh, methods of support, of course, uh, are very simple in terms of uh, application support. Nothing really needs to be done. The application can be used as is, but they may come at the cost of some uh, performance loss due to the fact that uh, the application cannot really be optimized to sequentially write since there is always the file system or device mapper in the way for uh, IOs. And also the file system and device mapper may have to uh, perform internal operation for uh, zone reclaiming and garbage collection. The second class of support that an application can rely on is basically to directly access the drive uh, and handling the sequential write constraint on its own. This requires, of course, directly modifying the application for that, since the sequential write constraint has to be handled by the user directly. The interfaces to um, use in those cases are direct access to the zone block device without any device mapper, or um, a path through interface through SCSI generic or NVMe character device for issuing directly commands to uh, the device from the application. In this case though, uh, zone management uh, API provided by the kernel and write ordering guarantees are not provided. So it is recommended to use a uh, block device file direct access uh, for gaining this, this feature from the kernel. So compared to the, 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 the POSIX file access uh, approach, this approach, uh, can give a much better performance since the application can really optimize its IO pattern to benefit, to, to gain the benefits of um, uh, zone block devices. However, uh, the difficulty now is that the application has to be modified in a way that is compliant with the sequential write constraint of zone block devices. Now let's look at zone FS. And first of all, where does ZoneFS uh, fit into this, this uh, support picture? So the goal of ZoneFS is to introduce a file interface for Zone uh, without hiding the sequential write constraint, meaning that ZoneFS does not fit uh, together with regular file systems, but rather fits into the um, compliant application support space where uh, zone, uh, zones still have to, or files now, still have to be written sequentially. Uh, however, this uh, new interface file abstraction for zones now can enable uh, simplification uh, within the application implementation as we gain a much richer uh, file system called uh, API compared to the traditional raw block device file access. 
This also allows to hide a lot of zone management commands necessary for uh, properly using these drives within the implementation of file system calls. Let's uh, have a quick overview of ZoneFS concepts. So as I mentioned, uh, with ZoneFS device zones, the zones of a device are now exposed as regular files. Uh, the, uh, the size of a file is directly determined uh, from uh, the zone type and the zone right pointer position. This is the picture here on the right side. Uh, for sequential zones, uh, which have a right pointer position, which indicates where the next write must be issued. The file size is uh, simply the right pointer position minus the start sector of the zone, uh, which indicates the amount of data that was already written to the zone. For a conventional zone, uh, which doesn't have right pointer uh, position, the zone FS uh, has a fixed file size for all conventional zone files and that file size is equal to the zone size. Again, let me repeat here. Um, ZoneFS is not a POSIX file system. Uh, files must be written sequentially, exactly like uh, when using a robot device access. Uh, but the, the introduction of the, the, the file interface for zones Law simplifying this, this approach, this, this constraint by, for example, allowing the use of the OAPAND uh, flag for when opening a zone file. So overall, all the zone information uh, or file information is obtained directly from the device as the zone information uh, from the device is used as metadata. This uh, allows to uh, completely remove any metadata uh, runtime modification of metadata uh, and on disk storing of metadata uh, for ZoneFS. The only metadata that exists for ZoneFS is a simple uh, super block stored at the beginning of the disk, which is completely static and never modified runtime. This means, of course, that no journaling is needed and there is no metadata IO overhead whatsoever uh, when using ZoneFS. ZoneFS file IO block mapping is implemented using uh, the newer IO map feature of the kernel rather, rather than the older buffer heads mechanism. Uh, and similarly to uh, Roblox device files, the, uh, that this block mapping uh, of device block to files in ZoneFS is completely static uh, and uh, directly determined from the zone start sector. Uh, also, since there is no metadata, uh, runtime metadata in ZoneFS, ZoneFS file tree is completely static, and in particular, the file names are immutable. The device zone configuration fully determines this, this file tree. That said, uh, ZoneFS still supports uh, file access control attributes, such as the user ID, group ID, and access permission, meaning that different uh, access permission, for example, can be given to different zones by changing the attribute of the corresponding file. More detail about this file tree. As mentioned, the file names are completely immutable and basically indicate the zone number uh, per zone type group. So ZoneFS groups zones of different types uh, under uh, subdirectories, under the mount point for the, the file system. The first uh, subdirectory that exists is CNV, which is used to group uh, files for conventional zones. Uh, this directory may not exist if the device does not have any conventional zone, which is the case, for example, on an NVMe ZNS drive. The second subdirectory that exists is SEC, which is used to group all sequential write required or write preferred zones, uh, zone files. <coughs> all end up uh, under this uh, directory. The uh, statistics, sta we're using the, the stat system call for these directories, uh, looking at the size field of uh, the, the statistics will indicate the uh, number of files that exist under each directory, meaning the number of zones that can be used uh, for each time group. 
ZoneFS also has a special handling of conventional zones. This is shown here. Uh, and uh, conventional zones that are contiguous on this can be aggregated together as a single file of larger size. Uh, as we will see, that is a, a feature that can be uh, used for doing interesting things. Let's look at an example. Here, uh, this is a 15 terabyte SMR host managed HDD, which has 524 commercial zones and 55,356 sequential zones of 256 megabytes. With the default uh, format option for, uh, for ZoneFS and mounting the drive, we can see the CNV and subdirectories grouping uh, file types, file zone types. Uh, and uh, the, the size of this directory directly indicates the number of files uh, within each directory. Looking at this directory individually, we see, for example, for the conventional zone uh, files, we see 523 files, as indicated here. Uh, all files have the same size, which is equal to the zone size, 256 megabytes. Uh, here and the this size is completely fixed for all files and can never be changed. For the sec directory, which groups a uh, sequential write required zone, we see again our 55,356 zones. And here the file size is uh, depends on the amount of data that was written to the file, like sent to the zone. And the file size uh, here uh, we can see zero for empty zones one megabyte in uh, zone one here, and 256 megabytes for this file number three, uh, which is completely full. When we aggregate conventional zones using this uh, format option here, shown here, we end up with a single file in the CNV directory. And this file um, size is now representing uh, the total of the aggregating zone, 140 gigabytes in this case. Uh, so of course the application is free to use this file in any manner it wants. One interesting use though is that this large file uh, being composed of, of conventional zones that accept random writes, we can use this file through a loopback mount for, uh, uh, with a regular uh, file system, in this example ext4 which allows to bring uh, a complete, fully POSIX compliant interface uh, for a limited space uh, uh, within, uh, directly on top of the zone block device. Now let's look uh, in more details how ZoneFS uh, um, interface, the, the file system, the file, uh, API system calls change how um, zones can be managed by application. So we're, we're going to compare the Roblox device access, access case with uh, ZoneFS. So first, uh, zone discovery. Uh, with the Roblox device access case, we have to use IO controls to first determine the number of zones and then uh, get um, an array allocated for uh, getting uh, zone information again through an eye control. Finally, the application can loop over the zone information to do whatever it needs to, uh, to apply to the zones. With ZoneFS, we can simply use the stat system call to get uh, information about the, uh, the subdirectory grouping zone types and directly loop uh, over this number of zones that we can obtain. And uh, similarly to the directory, use the stats, stat system call to obtain information about the file, which translates directly into information about the zone. So for example, as mentioned already, uh, the file size directly indicates the right counter position for the zone and where writes should be issued. The zone capacity uh, or the, is indicated by the maximum size of the zone, which is indicated by the maximum number of blocks that are allocated to the file. When writing sequentially to zones uh, for the Roblox device access case, uh, the application needs to do LSEQ and write or use PWrite or um, asynchronous IOs, all of which is an explicit um, uh, needs, is a need for the application to explicitly uh, specify the uh, write 
the right offset where the right needs to be issued. OAPN cannot be used in this case. So most typically, for example, here, the application would do a P write. With ZoneFS, uh, the same IO system calls can be used, but uh, there is essentially no need for the application to seek. It can simply uh, use OAPEND and uh, use the regular write system call without needing to specify any uh, write offset. For zone management operation, the roadblock device access case, this is all explicit using IO control commands. So for example, reset or finish zone uh, IO control, and these have to be issued, set up and issued by the application. The zone FS case, this is completely hidden within the truncate file system call uh, implementation. So for example, truncating a file to zero will automatically trigger zone FS issuing a zone reset operation to the device while truncating uh, a file to its maximum size uh, will trigger uh, issuing a zone finish operation to the device. So ZoneFS uh, has several uh, format and mount options. Uh, first of all, the format option, um, the, uh, uh, the, the system admin or the, the user setting up the system for its particular use case uh, can specify um, a default user ID, group ID, and access permission for all files. Uh, these uh, access permission uh, and uh, file attributes can be changed at runtime, but they will not be saved uh, persistently on the device since ZoneFS does not have any uh, metadata. Uh, format option can also allow turning on or off conventional zone aggregation. There's also a set of mount option, which for now are limited to uh, defining the behavior of ZoneFS when right IO errors happen. So there's any, uh, many uh, different reasons for, for right IO errors to, to be happening. A defective device or a dying device, of course, is one, but right IO error may also result from uh, the user improper use of uh, files, meaning that, for example, random writes to uh, files representing sequential zones were att attempt attempted. So um, to change the behavior of uh, ZoneFS to match uh, um, uh, the best way possible, the application use case for different behavior are defined. The default, default behavior in case of IOR is that the uh, file system will be remounted read-only preventing any further write to any zone. This is very similar to uh, what regular file system will do in case of metadata corruption, for example. The other option is to, uh, re to change uh, the zone file that suffered an error, error a write error to read only, only that zone. Uh, the other uh, option is to offline the, the zone file which suffered the error. So this will prevent not only writes to the, the file, but also reads. So any potentially corrupted data will not be accessible anymore for that zone file. And the last um, uh, behavior in case of uh, IO error is to tell ZoneFS to attempt to repair the file, which may eventually lead to uh, data loss as the the file for the zone may, for example, be completely reset uh, when attempting to repair. Now let's let's look at an example use case, and this uh, the use case we're looking at today is a prototype implementation of Level DB, which uh, uses a uh, zone FS. This work was done in cooperation with Dr. Tingyao from Wajong University of Science and Technology in Wuhan, China. Uh, this, uh, this work modifies uh, level DB to use ZoneFS to, to directly store um, SS table tables, which store uh, key values uh, of the database directly into ZoneFS files. Uh, 
this is modified, of course, to uh, use direct IO rights as uh, mandated by ZoneFS to ensure that sequential write ordering is preserved. Uh, however, uh, level DB buffered and uh, MMAP reads of SS table is preserved since this is something that is also supported by ZoneFS. The experiment uh, uh, performed during uh, with, with this modified implementation um, also uh, uh, are compared to a result obtained with a regular NVMe SSD, as opposed to uh, um, here we used also a physically similar ZNS SSD. And we uh, compared several uh, different cases. First with the regular SSD uh, using ext 4 and BetterFS. And on the ZNS SSD, uh, we also perform uh, some measurements using our prototype BetterFS zoned implementation, which gives a POSIX file interface on top of zone block device. We also compared a raw block device implementation of level DB and our uh, target zone FS implementation. The uh, all experiments are performed using 16 byte keys with 4K values for uh, uh, the, the KV uh, stored in the database. And uh, we use the DB bench, uh, benchmark available with uh, level DB. Uh, doing uh, random fields and sequential fields of the database, followed by two uh, sequential reads of all key values stored. The regular NVMe SSD and ext4 uh, uh, case measurements are used at the baseline, and all other results are normalized against these results. And the results uh, show an average uh, for five runs of all the, the benchmarks. Let's look at the results now. Uh, first, our baseline, EX, sorry, uh, our baseline ext4 uh, on the regular SSD, of course, for cases gives uh, a throughput of one. That's our baseline. Now, if we compare uh, the use of better FS on that regular SSD, we see that we uh, get here about uh, less than half the performance for both field random and field sequential, uh, and get similar performance or better for uh, the read sequential uh, sequences. When switching to the ZNS drive and again POSIX uh, file system uh, used with BetterFS uh, zone version of BetterFS, we uh, basically get the same result as the regular SSD for all cases. Now, uh, going away from the POSIX uh, interface of file system using Roblox uh, device access directly from LevelDB or ZoneFS, we see that we uh, get uh, over three times uh, better results for field random and almost uh, exactly the same again with field sequential patterns. And uh, for the field random case, uh, raw zone block devices give uh, even better results than ZoneFS. Uh, here, the reason is that ZoneFS being uh, giving, uh, mandating the use of files per zone, there is a, a small um, open close overhead that is introduced here that shows up uh, um, uh, as, as the difference here. Since for the raw uh, zone block device access case, the device file needs to be opened once and can the, the same file descriptor can be reused for all uh, SS table accesses. Here, ZoneFS requires the files to be open and closed as, as needed. Uh, both cases here re, uh, require the use of direct IO rights uh, for uh, field random and field sequential. And this results in a, in a significant drop in read performance for the first read sequential uh, for both uh, cases. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, reads are here uh, issued to the device itself and do not benefit from any uh, host level page cache caching, uh, like the regular file system uh, exploit here to give better results. However, on the second read sequential, uh, once we end up with loading data into the host page cache with the first read, uh, read sequence, we see that the uh, reads are uh, similarly to writes 
uh, almost three times faster than uh, with regular file system, showing that ZoneFS, as well as the Roblox device access, uh, have a much lower overhead for accessing data uh, going directly uh, to uh, the data uh, on disk or in the page cache. Another example will also be shown uh, in a presentation by Shinichiro Kawasaki on zone block device support in Hadoop HDFS. So this is another example use case of ZoneFS that we are currently uh, exploring. Let's now look at uh, uh, future work. So uh, the, the different use case we have uh, um, looked at show that uh, we still have room for further uh, improvement with uh, zone management integration within uh, ZoneFS. And uh, one uh, important uh, improvement that we are currently looking at and working on, the patches have already been uh, uh, posted on the mailing list, is to uh, handle the maximum number of open zones or active zones for, uh, in the case of an NVMe ZNS drive. So this, this maximum number of open zones and active zones limits the uh, set of zones that an application can uh, uh, write to simultaneously. Meaning that if an application opens too many zone files and try to issue writes to these open files, it may end up with some writes uh, failings for some files. So this uh, next step in integrating zone management into the file system calls uh, is looking to add explicit zone open and close commands integrating within the open and close file system calls. Doing so, if an application uh, can successfully open uh, a zone file, it is then warranted that rights issued to that file can be processed and will not be failed due to the lack of uh, uh, zone resources on the device side. Another area of improvement we are looking at, and that is being discussed openly on the uh, kernel mailing list, is an explicit control for issuing zone append writes. Uh, so using zone append writes as opposed to regular writes uh, avoids completely bypasses the kernel level zone write locking mechanism that is used to uh, provide uh, write ordering warranties. And since zone append uh, does not uh, actually require, uh, does not have any um, write ordering constraint, uh, we can exercise a device at much higher Q depth, Q depths, and as a result, get much higher performance. So the, the method we are currently looking at and discussing uh, on the menu is to control this uh, operation is the use of the OAPEND flag, open flag. A, fl uh, a file that is open with OAPEND would uh, then, um, any write to that file would then use zone, uh, zone append instead of regular writes. However, this integration requires uh, that the application be notified back of the actual uh, file offset that was written uh, for the particular write that was issued. Uh, especially in the case of asynchronous uh, writes IOs. And integrating this with the newer IO ring interface is not uh, something easy that does not currently fit with the IO ring uh, API. And so there is discussion going on uh, to determine how we can best uh, fit this new feature within the IO ring API. Finally, we're also looking at uh, relaxing direct IO constraint for files since this can help with, for example, doing dynamic caching of uh, writes. So it's a, a slightly different uh, way of doing writes than uh, pure buffered writes. It is still a, a, a direct IO like interface, but within the direct IO processing, we can preload the page cache so that a read afterward performance can be improved. And uh, most but not least, uh, this also uh, allows relaxing IO buffer address alignment that are normally required by direct IOs where buffers must be uh, aligned to, at the very least, the block size of the device. 
Um, this can uh, further simplify implementation uh, for application and avoid cost memory copy. So for example, Java is a language that not notoriously does not align any, anything to uh, uh, even page boundaries, as it always has internal data that, that end up at the beginning of allocation. So you get IO buffers are shifted by 16 bytes, for example. So uh, this buffer uh, um, address alignment, relaxing this, this buffer alignment constraint will uh, help a lot with further simplifying uh, application development. Now let's uh, conclude this presentation. So uh, from the work we've done with different use cases, uh, ZonaFS is proving to be a valid alternative to robot device accesses. Uh, it shows that uh, we, we can really significantly simplify application support of zone storage. Uh, and we also uh, sh shown that the overhead uh, of ZoneFS is very low and in many cases gives the exact same performance as uh, a Roblox device access use case would. We've also seen uh, that um, it is a much easier uh, way to use zone block device when the programming language is not something like C or C++. So for example, Java or Python application can uh, directly make use of zone block device uh, uh, when ZoneFS is being used as a file system interface also exists for these languages. So relaxing of direct IO uh, constraint will further help uh, with this particular aspect of ZoneFS. Uh, we do have a lot of information available online, uh, detailed information available online for ZoneFS. Uh, one is the kernel source tree documentation where we have a, a ZoneFS uh, file describing ZoneFS internal operation, format and mount uh, option, etc. The zonestorage.io website also has an article describing ZoneFS and showing different uh, uh, examples of how to use it. And the ZoneFS user space tools available on GitHub also describe how these tools uh, can be used for formatting and uh, mounting operation of uh, ZoneFS. Thank you for your attention. This concludes this presentation.